it's that time. You're here. Thanks for coming to the SBP podcast, Mobile Filmmaking. I'm your host, Susie Botello, and you are listening to episode 103. It's been a while since we last spoke, but I do want to share some really amazing, incredible, wonderful news. Um, <laughs> you think I'm going to give you a prize. Well, actually, I am planning on giving you a prize. But you have to do something before I can give you that prize. You know what you need to do? You need to submit your films to the International Mobile Film Festival in San Diego. Because guess what? All systems are go. We are at least... As of right now, we are cleared to have a live in-person event at the festival. And so we're really excited because we want to meet many, 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 many of you uh, and celebrate you uh, personally, publicly, uh, epically, whatever you want to, however you want to put that. But I'm really excited because, you know, it's, it's just been the last two years uh, we had to do this online. And so now we get to do it in person again. And I can't tell you, like, I don't know if you hear it in my voice or not, but I'm super excited about it. Um, we have some sponsors. We've, you know, got some sponsors uh, coming back uh, just today, actually. Engraving Pros, uh, who gives us these beautiful trophies to award you with. Um, and then we've also got a uh, film convert to award you even more uh, with their great software. And also we have Star Wars Steampunk Universe, who is going to make that red carpet show, the red carpet extravaganza, amazing. Um, the other uh, thing that, um, oh yeah, we do have another sponsor that I, we just secured, and that is Swords and Circuitry Studios. They are local. They are Neil and Jaina Halford, and they do some really incredible stuff. They just held their lockdown con. Uh, it was online, and uh, they're a great couple of um, really amusing friends of ours. And they've been sponsoring the film festival since 2018. They've agreed to come back and do it again. And we need them. So, you know, thank you guys for sponsoring. All of you, all our sponsors. Our guest tonight is really amazing. Well, I'm saying tonight because tonight is tonight here, depending on where you are. I mean, it could be the middle of the day. As a matter of fact, where our guest is, um, it is actually in South Africa, and it's going to be, let me see, it's going to be about seven in the morning or something like that over there. In any case, it's going to be early for him, so we'll, you know, give him some coffee, and we'll have him on the show, and I can't wait for you to meet him because he's going to share a film that he made, which I, I love the film. And also, I mean, it's not just because I love the film that he's on here. I love a lot of films, but also he brings something to, to our podcast. To, in, in this episode, he's actually going to speak and share a lot of what, so his forte has to do with audio and storytelling. So if you think about that, those are two of the main ingredients in any film. And so I think it's, it's really key that you tune in, that you listen to him. I think you're going to be inspired, but I think you're also going to be well-informed um, about how important audio is and how to make your audio incredible for your film. A lot of times, you know, the, the audio can kill your film, no matter how good it is. It, uh, your audience is not as forgiving. The film festivals you're submitting them to, they're not going to accept your film if it's really good if the audio just is not there so this is an important episode for you to be listening to and i'd like to welcome you to our guest so let's go and talk to him now and introduce him to you and don't forget if you go to internationalmobilefilmfestival.com you'll get all the info 
so you can submit to our film festival and do it now. Don't wait till the last minute. with our super guest from South Africa. His name is Brian and his last name is Olsen. And I'm sure you've heard about him because he is making amazing and incredible mobile films. Hey, Brian, how are you? I'm good, uh, Susie. How are you? I'm fantastic, especially now that we get to finally chat and share with, uh, with our audience. Um, Listen, Brian, I am really impressed. Um, okay. All the things that you do, uh, that you're, you're, I mean, you, you are an audio, you, the list of the things that you do with audio are fantastic. Yeah. And I loved, there's one thing that I read about you about um, in your, in your, in your bio, and that is how the audio experience that you have and your passion for storytelling brought you yeah. into the into the film uh, arena, right? Yes, and I think yeah. that's impressive. And so I'd like you to share that. Um, but before before we go there, actually, sorry to our audience, I'm I'm always teasing a little bit about what we're going to talk about before we talk about it. Uh, so I'd like you to share a little bit with our audience, just a little bit about about you you know, and then, and then talk about what I just said. Awesome. Okay. So I'm from South Africa. Um, uh, I'm born and raised in Johannesburg. Um, I come from a little town called Gelukstal, um, which is a, uh, what they call a colored settlement, uh, because in South Africa we have, uh, colored people and it's not to offend anybody. That's just a, a race group in South Africa, which is just another word for like mixed race uh, people. So I, I grew up very poor. Um, and um, so, you know, something like filmmaking was never top of mind, to be honest with you. Um, my mom always wanted me to study like, like accounting and become like a doctor or chartered account or whatever. And that was never my passion. I was always a creative person. Um, so when I finished school and my mom asked me, like, listen, uh, have you decided what you wanted to do? I was like, no, I'm going to take a year off. I'm going to go find like a job, just work and just find myself. Um, and uh, after that year went past, my mom came back to me and said, listen, you need to decide what you need to do with your life. And by, by that point in time, I knew that I didn't want like any sort of corporate job or like anything in the medical field because it was just not my passion. Um, even though I love working with people, uh, those kind of fields was just not something that I felt was stimulating, even though you can make a lot of money in those fields, uh, especially in South Africa. Um, so then I found this booklet of a, a sound school and there was sound engineering and I was like, this is what I want to do. And the sound en engineering uh, uh, course or this diploma that I did, it basically opened up everything for me uh, in terms of production and sound design and working with, with live sound. And there was a bit of an element of uh, video production as well. So we had a Adobe Premiere course. So the reason why we used that was because we needed to mix um, like video in 5.1 surround sound. Mm -hmm. So that was my first um, introduction to video. Uh, and then I graduated and uh, originally what I wanted to do was I wanted to be a music producer. 
so I, obviously when I when I graduated, uh, the first thing I did was try to get myself into studios and produce like beats for people. Um, but then I didn't like the 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 lifestyle because you know like artists aren't the the most responsible. <laughs> how can I say people? You know. So there was drugs and 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 smoking of weed and those type of stuff, and I was feeling so uncomfortable. And I was like, "Listen, yeah, I'm I'm a music purist. Um, when I create music, I create music so that I can like change someone's life or affect someone uh, in a positive way. So I'm not going to like like put that kind of negative energy on on like my music. So then I pulled out entirely, and then I started working in radio. And I never ever in my whole entire life imagined that I was going to work in radio. So I thought that that was just like a like a pit stop in my career that I was going to go back into the studio and make beats and be this like world class producer and one day win like a like a Grammy and I'm going to stand there and give my speech. I had all of this played out <laughs> in my mind when I was like in my 20s, you know. Um and um yeah, then then I fell in love with radio because radio is theater of the mind, right? That's mm -hmm. the 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 term that they use. So you creating a three dimension uh, dimensional uh experience in a what is essentially just a two dimensional space right yeah so so music is exactly the same way how they how they mix uh instruments in a, a music space so you'll have like a particular instrument uh pan being panned left or one uh, pan hard left or hard right or whatever so you create this whole entire spatial experience so with radio production and imaging production and jingles and that, that type of thing it works exactly the same thing. You create this whole entire experience where people can imagine what the advert or the jingle is saying um, in their mind. So you paint like a whole entire picture. That's why when, when, uh, when people actually meet radio DJs, for instance, as an example, the first thing that they always say is that I never imagined you look like this. <laughs> because people paint this picture of, of what this person looks like in in real life so True. so so that's what uh audio is about so for me audio plays such a, a a a important role especially when it comes to filmmaking because if you have to watch a horror movie for an example and you put the sound off it won't be as scary as as you would watch it with sound on because m music plays such a, a, a an important role to create suspense or a mood, or a feel. So everything about audio in video, uh, or well, everything about video is complemented by audio. So even if you color grade a, a particular piece, like say if you want to create a warm looking feel, the music needs to complement that in, in the background. And sometimes people don't, um, they're not aware of that. Uh, it's, it's very subliminal, especially with audio. Uh, that's why when I got into audio production and, and, and radio and stuff like that, it like no one in my family is an audio producer. Like I've got an uncle that's a, a sound engineer, but he, he, he does music production. And I think that's where the, the music production came from, hmm. but there's no one that works in radio. I'm the first in my family to have ever gone into the radio space. I'm the first in my family to, to do voiceovers, um, you know, no one does any of this. So I, I never learned this from anybody. This is, was literally just me being curious about the industry and, and just, like, like just trying to like create cool stuff. Um, so it sounds like you're really passionate about that too. So you probably, even though you didn't go to, you know, get trained for that, you probably get curious whenever you're on Google or something like that and you look up things, right? Yes, like like everything I know about filmmaking, I never went to film school at all. I I YouTubed, like yeah. my first experience of well, not my first experience. I say that I've always been curious about filmmaking. Um, I just did not have the time or the funds to actually go to film school. Um, because I'm a family man. I'm I'm 39. Um, I've got I've got three kids. Uh, I've got a. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say full-time job. I, I work for myself, but I mean, like, it's like a full-time job. Um, oh, yeah. So 
to to basically take time off to to go to film school was just not an option. So when the lockdown happened in South Africa uh, last year, um, there was an advert on Facebook, which was the Mobile Creator Summit, yes. which was hosted by Glenn. I'm going to mess up his surname. Mulcahy, I think, <laughs> is his surname. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm not going to help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry, Because I don't want to hack it either. <laughs> yes, but, but it was so interesting because it was this weekly thing that they did where they just had uh, like a whole entire virtual presentation with like different people across the world. And I found it so fascinating. But I mean, like before that, I was recording stuff, but it was more like for social media and like vertical videos for like stories and stuff like that. But it was never like like proper like film-like cinematic shots. And I was very curious about that. So I watched uh, like the film uh, creator uh, summit like like religiously every week yeah. uh, and luckily the stuff is pre-recorded as well so I could watch it again and again and again and after that I just got like lost in, on YouTube like YouTube is such a such a fantastic resource for for anybody that wants to get into anything for that matter so when I typed in filmmaking and anamorphic and cinematic and for months that was my lingo my wife was getting so upset with me because <laughs> Everything was just like cinematic, uh, you know, and um, yeah, and and it just like engulfed me. It, it took over me for weeks on end because you know, literally, you locked up in home. There's nowhere to go. Uh, everything is closed. So it, it was just me and filmmaking. So that's when I started. You know, I, I downloaded Filmic Pro and uh, started messing with that, and it just it just spiraled from there yeah it's um it's an incredible field um back when um when i started you know my my journey into mobile filmmaking uh by creating the the platform the the film festival and then the mobile film school i couldn't even find a way to connect a microphone into the phone and 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 there had to be a way, right? I was just so convinced. But the way to find those things was to go to forums. And I hated forums. Because someone would say something that sounded very smart. And then someone would, you'd read the, the response to that. And it was somebody yeah. who would say, no, that is not the case. And I was like, oh, I thought I found the answer. And thousands of thousands of Pages later, inside these forums, I found out about the the iRig Pre, where you could plug in a XLR microphone and then plug it into the headphone jack on your phone. And I was like, "Oh, I can take my, I can use my XLR shotgun mic that I use for video production." And um, and but there was no none of that stuff. Filmic Pro wasn't around. Uh, they started. At about the same time, but you know they had to develop everything. Yeah, and uh, and there was there there just was nothing to to help filmmakers really in the sense that it is is now where you can yeah, you this, really can hardly tell or hear the difference. Yeah, no the 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 type of resources that are available now there's absolutely no excuse for anybody that wants to get into filmmaking. Uh, you literally can just Google smartphone filmmaking and you'll get a ton of like resources. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the one thing is that you find that a lot of people are repeating the exact same thing, which is a positive thing because if you don't know anything about filmmaking and you need to like make sure that you're finding the right thing, watching multiple creators talking about more or less the same thing in their own way, just how can I say? Um, it, it just reaffirms. It. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, like, and, and, and that was my experience is that I could quickly get on board and quickly uh, educate myself in terms of, of what mobile filmmaking is about. You know, the fact that like, for instance, the iPhone has a fixed uh, uh, aperture. So then if you want to like do the 180 degree rule that you need an, a variable ND filter. And like in South Africa, like I was looking for like, 
mobile gear specifically like that I could get, but I couldn't find anything mm. uh, locally. And that's when I, I, I started Googling and I found like, obviously Moment is, is big on that. Uh, and then there's uh, Ulanzi that's also big on that. And then you know, a lot of uh, companies, Polar Pro has the, uh, a kit for, for, for mobile filmmaking. But because we are on the tip of Africa, to get stuff shipped out here takes very long and is expensive. So I had to save up uh, cash to make sure that, uh, you know, I decided I needed uh, a, a, a variable ND filter. I, you know, fell in love with anamorphic. So I was like saving up for an anamorphic lens. Um, and, you know, once the time and the economy and the, and, and the exchange rate was right, I ordered a bunch of stuff, uh, just closed my eyes and spent the cash. And I, I ordered a bunch of, of gear and I imported it and, and I've been filming it with it ever since. Um, yeah, and I think only now I'm, I'm starting to see like people from, from South Africa, a lot of uh, mobile filmmakers. Um, like one person is SJ van Breede. Mm. I don't know if you know her, but she's big on the mobile uh, filming scene uh, internationally, and she's award-winning uh, mobile uh, filmmaker. And I had no idea there was anybody like that in South Africa until I started like looking around and seeing, hey, there's actually a small little community of mobile filmmakers starting because even though South Africa is a destination for Hollywood to shoot a lot of movies, like The Avengers was shot in Cape Town, I think, mm, and in Johannesburg. Um, so Hollywood comes to South Africa because it's cheap. It's cheap for Hollywood to fill him here. And I mean, like, if you look at the landscape, it's, 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 you know, you can shoot lots of different movies with the scenery that we have locally. So, um, so it's not, it's not, uh, a filmmaking is not a, uh, a, a, like an uncommon thing. It's just, you know, finding people that are into mobile filmmaking. So, um, I'll have to connect you with some people that I know too. Yeah. Yeah, so like, yeah, I, I, I mean, like, um, like last year, I think, uh, Cape, the Cape Town Film Festival had their first uh, mobile um, filmmaker festival, nice. uh, and that's when I started seeing that there was actually a lot of talented young people that are so passionate about filmmaking, and the only thing that they have is a cell phone. Um, which is, is so amazing because the thing is, I, even though I am very curious or I started, you know, with mobile filmmaking, for me, filmmaking is filmmaking. You know, it's not, it does, it doesn't matter what gear you use. Like, I know that there's a whole discussion about gear doesn't matter. But the thing is, like, in a sense, that is true. Um, because, I mean, if you're passionate about, creating something uh, at the end of the day you'll you'll work with whatever you have and, and i mean that's the case uh with myself and a lot of it's local. when the need comes up like you're you're working yeah. on a project and you have a need and you start to look for how do i fix it and how do i provide this and yeah. that's when you realize that you need a particular you know some gear or or some yeah. app or 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 to or some skill right and that's yeah. when those things come up. It's like, um, you know, I used to do graphics design and people used to ask me, you know, hey, teach me how to use, um, and, and this is like <laughs> Quark Express, right, for, for layouts. And I'm like, okay. you have to have a, a, you know, it's like InDesign. And I'm like, you need to have a purpose. You can't just go teach me how to do this without having, like, what do you want to create with it? You know, and then you start looking for the tools to create those things. Um, and yeah. so I think it's kind of the same thing. It's like you don't you f you don't really need anything to get started. It's once you start going deeper into yes. wanting to create certain things that you start to. And, and, and Google is your friend, <laughs> you know, because you yeah. can just put in things like, how do I do this? How do I fix that? And uh, it'll give you the resources. Yeah, no, 100%. Totally agree with you. Let me ask you something. Um, yes. Because you were talking about um, your, your, 
your first uh, paid gig earlier. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Because I'm I'm really amused with that. That was in, I forgot when, but it was in 2020, yeah, right? It, yeah, it was September, I think, last year of last year. So I obviously was experimenting with like a bunch of like creating like videos. So uh, I think when South Africa uh, eased our lockdown restrictions, we were able to, you know, go for a walk outside, you know, um, you know, because it, it was legal. <laughs> so then I decided I was going to fill up my walk and it was a bit it was, uh, early in the morning. Um, so the lighting was perfect for, for, for filming without, without like an ND filter or anything like that. So I just created this little sequence uh, of me taking a walk. And after that, I posted that sequence. And a, 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 mus a musician actually saw it and he was like, wow, uh, you shot this on a phone? <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's a phone. Like, it's not, not something to write home about, I suppose. He's like, no, the visuals are so clean and, and it's perfect. Would you mind uh, doing my music video? Nice. I've never shot a music video in my whole entire life. <laughs> I've never, I mean, like, I've only learned filmmaking in March of 2020 um, mm. when I did the mobile uh, filmmaker uh, summit thingy. I keep on messing that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so then I was like, cool, I'm up for, for making a music video because for me it was just another, um, exp like, something to experience, something just to, you know, upskill myself. So then I obviously researched like a lot of like how to make a music video using your phone. Um, and it was like obviously low budget because um, the only thing I probably rented was was lights because I needed like, uh. you know, proper lights. Um, and then I had the, obviously the gear that I purchased. Um, so then I invoiced the guy. I didn't know that he was going to accept my invoice. I thought that my price was a little bit too high. <laughs> And he was like, he signed the invoice and he paid me and I had the money in my bank account. And I was like, okay, I should have asked for more money <laughs> <laughs> if it was that easy. Um, but yeah, I didn't really mind for, for the cash, to be honest with you. I just wanted the experience yes. of going through uh, like making a music video because I felt that if I can do this, then I can probably like, uh, like make music videos as, as a side hustle or whatever. Um, so yeah, I went through the process. We, we, we met up. I, he explained to me exactly what he wanted. Um, I signed up to uh, a platform called Envato Elements, um, uh, because he wanted like, like, uh, like, uh, text, um, like mobile text uh, on the screen and stuff like that. So I didn't have those kind of resources. So I used them, some of the money that he paid me to, to, to get those, those elements. Good. Um, and yeah, then I think for about three days, we shot uh, the music video uh, and we didn't pay any money for the location or anything like that. It was in and around where he lived. Uh, there was just like a whole entire vibe uh, at uh, in the area that he lived. So I took advantage of like the people and the cultures and stuff that was there. Um, and yeah, then I made the music video on an anamorphic lens and I gave it to him and he was blown away and the music video ended up on, um, uh, it's, uh, MTV base uh, in South Africa and another, uh, the channel called channel O, which is also a music based channel. So then the music video started like rotating. And you're like, Oh on, my God, on, look on at TV. my video. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, this, my video, I, I made that with an iPhone yeah, and no one knew that it was an iPhone. That's, that's just the amazing part is that no one realized that it was on a phone until I told them it was that's made the, on a phone. That's the Sean Baker feeling, right? Yeah. So yeah, that was just, <laughs> that was just an amazing feeling. And then after that, I got a, a, a bunch of uh, inquiries for, for, for shooting uh, music videos and stuff like that. But then, yeah, I took a few uh gigs on that i did that um but yeah it's it's you know i for me uh, even though i enjoy shooting music videos i'm more about storytelling to be honest with you um so i want like documentary style filmmaking that's that's actually the field that i want to go into i um, love documentaries 
because those are, you know, when in documentaries or, or even on the news, they talk about stories, you know, because yeah. that's really what they're sharing. But documentaries are, are more artistic. Yeah. And the thing is, like, I just think that from the tip of Africa, we have, we have so many stories to tell. Um, and, and I just feel like there's enough people that are making music videos and they're getting paid for those things. And I'm not willing to, to, to compete in that field. If I do get a music video gig and I, it resonates with me, I'll do it. But at this point in time, I'm lucky to, that filmmaking is not my bread and butter. It's, it's, it's a passion that, that I fell in love with. Um, and luckily, I don't have a boss or anyone that's dictating what I need to film, how I need to film it. I'm my own creative person. I have my YouTube channel that I'm obviously running at the moment. Um, and I can, I can literally take on projects that, that I feel like I want to take up. Um, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm all about like, I don't know, maybe I'm just a bit of a purist or anything like that, but <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, I feel like, you know, at this point in time, telling people stories and, and getting it out to a big audience, um, so that we can make a difference in people's lives. Yes. That's, that's where I'm at, at this point in time. Um, um, if, if I can make money out of, out of filmmaking, I'll do it. But I mean, that money will just go back into like, you know, as resources for, for whatever gear I need. But, but yeah. sometimes it's like whatever it takes to tell that story, you know, because it's, it's one story and there are many ways to, to share that story. The thing, the thing that drives me um, about all of this is, you know, even from the time I was very little where I found out what the power of storytelling is from both sides, from the person that's, um, how should I say this? Not just listening, but the person who is consuming, right? Somehow yes. that story and the person who is telling it. And there's, a there's like a, like the call and the answer, right? Um, where it's very powerful. It creates a very powerful energy and connection between those two people. Um, when, uh, when I was little, right in, in Spain, my grandmother was from Spain and she would stare out the window. Um, and sometimes she was sad because my grandfather died. Right. And, um, he died before I was born, but she was sad and she missed him and she would stare out the window and I would go into her room and I would see that. And I was maybe five years old and I would, I would notice that. And I, and I knew one thing that made my grandmother light up happy. And that was to tell me stories, which is something a lot of grandparents do. Yeah. And I would say to her, I want, in my mind, I would say, Hmm, I want to make my grandmother happy. And so then I would say to her, hey, grandma, tell me a story. And then all of a sudden she would look at me and begin to share a story with me. And she became from someone who was sad, reflecting, staring out the window into a storyteller, which was taking, um, I don't know how to explain that, but just happy. She was happy all mm -hmm. of a sudden. Yes. And for me, I loved listening to her stories. And it's kind of like what I do in this podcast, right? I ask you yeah. to share your story and you share your story. And I, I enjoy this process very much. Yeah. And I am sure the people who are listening right now are listeners, right? Are enjoying yeah. this as well. And it's inspiring. And that brings me to what I was trying to say about the powerful medium that storytelling is. It is stories are more powerful than anything else you can imagine. And if you took all the money out of the world, one thing that would always survive would be the stories. Yeah. No, I agree. I definitely agree with that. And I think it's, um, it's very necessary. And you were talking about all the stories that you have there to tell. 
And I'd like you to talk now. This is a great segue. (laughs) (laughs) I would love for you to talk now about this movie, this this, uh, spoken word film that you made, Finding Freedom. Yeah. Um, So Finding Freedom, uh, I started writing it more or less, I think, in April of this year. Mm. Um, The 27th of April in South Africa is Freedom Day. Um, And we celebrated, I think, 27 years of democracy in South Africa ever since uh, the apartheid uh, government, uh, you know, apartheid ended uh, in, what, 1994. Uh, We've got our first democratically elected government. And, I mean, everybody knows Nelson Mandela. Mm-hmm. Like I think he like outside of any I think outside of uh, Mother Teresa, the Dalai uh, John Lama. Paul II, yeah. Dalai Lama, and and Barack Obama. Oh really? I think <laughs> I think I think Nelson Mandela is the, yes. the most famous politician, and a lot of people draw so much inspiration from from what we we call him the father of our nation. We call him Tata, mm. and um, so. He obviously had a vision for South Africa. And we still are waiting to realize that vision because over the years, uh, because of like mismanagement and corruption and, and, you know, party political politics and all of that, South Africa is not in a great place. So, you know, I was reflecting on, on our freedom, even though we have freedom of movement, we have freedom of the economy. There's still a, a, a huge segment of the population in South Africa that, 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 that they don't even live on a dollar a day. Mm. That's how poor they are. And I remember that one of the, the promises that Nelson Mandela made was free education. And education is so expensive in South Africa. Proper education. I'm not talking about government education. I'm talking about proper education that would give you the skills to go outside in the world and actually make something of yourself. Um, so I was reflecting on that. Um, and one of the stats that also came out more or less at the same time is that during the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown in South Africa, uh, so many women were assaulted by their partners um, in isolation because now these women are locked up in their homes with their perpetrators, nowhere to go. And the, the reports, uh, the violence, sexual violence and, and partner violence reports in South Africa uh, went up world, like, like skyrocketed because of the fact that these women had absolutely nowhere to go. Uh, and obviously now recently with uh, 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 Derek Chauvin's case with... Uh, um, with 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 the murder of um, George Floyd was also uh, on the high agenda. So all of these things were happening while I was reflecting on my own freedom and the freedom of others. So I started writing uh, Finding Freedom. Um, and I mean, like, I referenced a little bit of uh, um, Dr. King as well um, in, in, in the, 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 the piece that we wrote. And, um, yeah, and, uh, yeah, it's just me reflecting on, on everything. And I just felt that, you know, like, um, you know, I needed to, to, to make something that, that, um, that reflects the, the situation of the world is that even though in South Africa, we have this freedom that we were granted, we so far off from like really being emancipated from, from poverty and 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 sickness and 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 then I discovered that it's not just South Africa that's going through something like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, even the mere fact in the states that that this whole entire case with De- uh, uh, Derek Chauvin uh, went about it was just like one case that that happens on a daily basis where where police violence against uh, Black Americans are uh, it's a norm. There have been many um, cases before that, and since then, it's just the, you know, the irony that, um, I mean, we're talking about smartphones, right, and video, 
Yeah. Um, but that was um, that she recorded that, and she she didn't just take a clip. She she recorded a story as it was happening. Yeah. And I mean, like, if it wasn't for that 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 video, we wouldn't have known about that. We wouldn't have experienced that pain. We wouldn't have, you know. Yeah, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have had the impact. It would it would, yeah it would have just been another black man being assaulted by police. Yeah. So so yeah, uh, when I wrote Finding Freedom, um, I got hold of um, my niece. So the person in the in the the video is my niece. Uh, mm. Her name is Kyra. So she is uh she's she's an an, an activist in her own right. Um, so I was talking to her about, about finding freedom and she was like, she loves the idea. She would be, love to be part of it. How can she be part of it? Then I shared the script that I wrote and I was, and she was like, oh, I love this. I so, I so want to be like part of this. Can, can we do it? And I was like, fine, I'm, I'm game. I'm, 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 yeah. So then I flew down to the coast. Uh, so the town that we shot uh, finding freedom is called Queenstown. It's a little town in the Eastern Cape and the south of South Africa, the coastline. And I think we shot about, I was there for about three days. Uh, so the, 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 the great thing about, about Queenstown, it also has this like natural like beauty. So we could shoot like every, everywhere. So it just fit like the storyline because everything about, about finding freedom, uh, the, the different locations that we were at, um, was just like symbolisms for for what the script was all about. Um, so it it's it's just like once I got there. Obviously, we did a bit of pre production before the time, but once I got there, we hit the ground running, and we, you know, it, it was so amazing that that everything just worked out. Uh, I after a while, I felt that am I doing something wrong? Did I press record? Like, why is everything flowing so well? Because we just, <laughs> like, every time we were at a, at a location, we shot. Um, and then I would take extra shots because I was like, I'm done. Uh, <laughs> maybe I should do it again just to make sure that I got the shot. Uh, so it just worked out entirely. Um, I, you know, she did the voiceover for it as well. And she has such a powerful voice in her own right. She's a, she's a music artist, a songwriter. Um, so, I mean, like she was just the perfect person. And she person was feeling to, it. She loved it. She, yeah. she, she asked me after that, can we do another project like this? I'm, I'm so keen on, on, on this project. It's so, I, I mean, like it's, everything just worked out. She is amazing. She's a 20 year old. Um, so she, you know, female in South Africa. So she has a voice. So I felt that it's important to you know, work with people that are passionate about, about projects like that. So, yeah, it just, it just worked out beautifully. Oh, that's um, wonderful. And, and I'm so proud of it because at, you know, Finding Freedom, I did I actually did a few projects. Um, I did, uh, obviously, I did a music video uh, as well. And then I did... Assimilate. Uh, uh, assimilate, which is a project about identity. Uh, and I did speak to you about it a little bit. And why I love that project so much is because, you know, being a person in South Africa, a colored person uh, of mixed race, um, you know, when something like Her Heritage Day in South Africa happens, everybody dresses up in their traditional clothing. Even Afrikaans people, I don't know how much you know about Afrikaans people, but I mean, they have their, their beliefs and all of that. When it comes to colored people, we are... We associate with whatever we want to associate with. Um, so even the, the topic of heritage and belonging and identity and all of that is something that I still like reflect on on a daily basis because for me, it's, it, I know that where you come from doesn't necessarily define who you are, but you know, just the mere fact. But it's a part of it's you. A, yes, it, it is. And the thing is like... When when other people talk, they talk about their grandfathers that came from, like Europe or or whatever. I mean, you told me your story about yeah. but your experience growing up in Spain, all of that. Like, I can't tell you my history beyond my great grandfather. Um, so 
like, and a lot of people like look at me and they see my surname. They say, "Oh, you're Olsen, uh, are you Norwegian? Are you are you what are you? You f- from Finland? Are you no? I'm like I'm from South Africa. South Africa. We don't know anybody with that surname Olsen. Like you know, like, it's not like a common surname. And and that's because my my ancestors come from from Scandinavia. Uh, but I don't know anything about those people. So. So my journey in filmmaking is in parallel with my personal journey of identity. So that's when I wrote Assimilate. And um, that, it's, it's a very simple, powerful little story about, about, you know, a little bit about colonialism. South Africa is a, it's a you know, uh, used to be a colony. Um, so obviously the whole story about identity and, and apartheid and all of that stuff. You know, it's still a, a, a very strong po- uh, a topic in politics in South Africa. So I just wanted like to do like a bit of an artistic feel to that. So Assimilate was, was just one of those projects. And yeah, and I did a documentary about um, my mother-in-law. Mm-hmm. It's called uh, Tomorrow's Promise. Um, yeah. she, she, she works on the, uh, the cruise ships in, in Los Angeles and in, in the States and stuff like that. So when lockdown happened, oh, um, it was right. very difficult for her to get back home. Uh, so she was bobbing in the ocean uh, for months where oh they gosh. couldn't dock. So then eventually they found a route uh, across the Atlantic to, to the Netherlands. And they were in quarantine there. And then they were going to charter a flight back to South Africa. And at the same time, her mother got a heart attack. And she was in hospital and she died. No. And, and she was stranded in, in Rotterdam in, in the Netherlands. And we tried so, like, so much. We tried to get hold of, of the officials, the ministers, the, the minister of transport to try and, and push forward her chartered flight so that she can make it for the, the funeral. And unfortunately, she missed her own mom's Aww. funeral. So, so then I, 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 I recorded, I did the documentary when she was in, uh, eventually when she got to South Africa. Um, and um, the first time that we got together as a family was actually her brother's, uh, I think it was his birthday party. So it was the first time that we could have like a, a indoor sitting as well. And because we all family, it was, it was fine. We could, you know, because we were all in a, uh, our own bubble. So we got like a chance to, to like get together. And I recorded all of this. I recorded the whole entire experience of these people seeing each other for the first time after like five months, I think. And then after that, I recorded her, uh, her brother and her. And she told the story about how, devastating it was so that was that's what um a tomorrow's promise is about it's it's a it's a pure story about a fam one family that just was c- connected uh, regardless of the circumstances they found themselves in and obviously the journey of my mother-in-law trying to get back to south africa so yeah so i did all of these projects last year and and this year you know just well, imagine like, that most people just do one or two in a year yeah, I I did assimilate and finding freedom in a week. <laughs> because you're a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> because I was just overflowed with ideas, and I was like, I have to do this. And when I landed uh, for after doing finding freedom, I landed in South Africa. I think the next day I went to go shoot assimilate. Wow. So yeah, it's just like at this point in time, I'm like I and said. Every I'm, time you grab your phone, it's a reminder. Yes, like my phone is no longer just a phone. Eh? I got like like every single app you can think of on my phone and I just pull it out and I record stuff. <laughs> I even started doing TikTok now. I never knew that I would, I would start Are you dancing TikTok. in TikTok? No, no, I don't <laughs> dance. I make money moves. That's what I do on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just tell like funny stories on TikTok. Uh, like TikTok is my outlet for like, like comedy relief. Oh, nice. Um, so I no, I don't dance on TikTok. It's I don't dance no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not that's not my vibe. But yeah, like I just enjoy creating stuff, and every day, uh, you know, 
I'm I'm looking for an opportunity to make something. Um, and I'm telling you, if you've ever conversation with my wife, ah, oh, my wife is like, ah, oh, I indulge every single thing that you do about anamorphic lenses and mirrorless cameras and gimbals and ND filters. But then she said, can we just like watch a movie, please? Like, <laughs> I love the fact that you're doing all these amazing things but can we just like make popcorn and watch a movie <laughs> i'm tired of all this stuff so yeah it's yeah it's, well I'm and, just that, passionate and that is about the it. that is the cool thing like when you you know that i miss about our film festival you know but we're gonna have it in person you know but it's that it's the fact that people come together right they meet and they get to talk about this and the person that you're talking to is very interested in what you have to say about the same thing that you're interested about sharing. Exactly. Yeah. And I've kind of been lacking that, to be honest with you, just like to have like a friend or like a professional, someone that I can work with, I can just talk about this stuff. Because, um, yeah, as I'm learning, I'm still learning. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm an aspiring filmmaker. Yeah. Um, so I'm not professing that I know a lot of stuff. I'm still learning and, but it's such a, it's such a fun thing to like, like talk to people about it because, you know, especially like, yeah, I'm having this conversation with you. Um, ever since I started making, uh, like films with my, my iPhone, I've just been talking to so many people from across the world, people that are passionate about filmmaking passionate about storytelling, passionate about, about mobile filmmaking and where, where this uh, industry is going. It's just amazing and fascinating, like engaging with so many people across the world um, that I am so blessed that, that, that people are, <laughs> that, that they find me interesting, that they want to talk to me as well. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm just enjoying it. I'm just loving it. And I just love the fact that it's not, like I said, uh, like before, it's not my bread and butter, so you know, I, it, it's not like my nine to five. So I can be passionate about it, and 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 you know, it's my it's like a sense of escapism for me uh, to create something because like I run like on tight deadlines on a daily basis with like making audio productions and stuff like that. And even though I enjoy that, I mean, I'm getting paid for something I love. Like filmmaking is just where it's it's my oasis. I think um, we when, once we ha we find an outlet to share stories in it becomes not not so much addicting but you start to realize how fulfilling that is personally. Yes. And that is a that's a human thing, right? That's the one thing we all humans I mean there's a lot of things but but that is what I'm trying to say is like you know, I have a dog he doesn't have anything to do with storytelling. He doesn't care to tell us a story. <laughs> he doesn't have a need to express a story. He'll, he'll have a, a need to express when he's hungry or when he needs to go outside, but he's not going to, you know, express a story. That's a human thing. We've been doing that yeah. forever. Uh, from caveman days, you know, on the caves, you know, uh, drawing yeah. pictures to today where we're able to make films and share our stories with our phones, right? Yes. Yeah. And so I think yeah. you found your outlet um, and uh, your wife has had enough of it, right? But <laughs> 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 yeah, no, she, yeah, no, she, she's very supportive. Um, but I mean, she, she wants her husband now and then. <laughs> she doesn't want the filmmaker. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I yeah I'm I'm like I said I'm I'm just blessed to have like so many people supporting me and you know um when I showed her um finding freedom and assimilate before I I I did anything and she actually particularly loved assimilate she was like wow you need to take this and submit it to a film festival because people need to see what you did. Uh, and I was so insecure about like showing it to anybody because I was looking at, oh, I didn't place the light properly in a, p a particular uh, position or no, I have to go re-record like the vocal track because, you know, I was thinking all of the technical stuff. It's um, never perfect though. 
Nothing. Yes. W when you're an artist or a creator, it's never perfect. It's never, I mean, you're, you were talking about deadlines. That's the only yeah. time that you know you have to be done. Otherwise, you keep it yes. going forever, right? And I would have probably worked on it a lot more. Mm -hmm. I, I'm actually thinking of re-editing it uh, just to color grade it a little bit better. Uh, but then I told myself, just leave it. I did that project. It exists. It's out there. Now move on to the next thing. Learn from from this, and 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 the next project will be probably closer to the the perfection that I have in my mind. Yes, that yeah. that's actually what I advise to do too. Is just to learn from each one, um, and keep creating. You know, uh, yeah. because you, like you said, you have many many stories to tell. Yeah, um, I'm actually, funny enough, I'm working on a project. It's going to be a bit of a long-form story. Um, I'm not going to say what it is, but it has to do with, um, because I come from a very religious background as well. Um, you know, church and stuff was like a, like a big thing growing up. But, you know, growing up as a youngster, you, you know, whatever your mom or your father, whatever tells you about God and religion and stuff like that, you take it in because you don't know anything else. But as I was growing up, I started questioning a lot of beliefs and, and, and the way people did things. So this new story that I've got in mind has something to do with that and about, about God and stuff like that. And I don't know how people are going to take it because um, I know that a lot of people are religious. Um, but I mean, it's not like I don't believe in God. I do believe in God. It's just I'm not a religious person. I think there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, so so the story is, is a bit of a, a, a short story, long form. I want to shoot it entirely also on mobile as well. Um, and it has to do with creation. So uh, hopefully I can and put it together. It's going to be a bit of a big budget project um because the things that i have in mind will are obviously going to need like the proper location the, the 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 actress for it as well um and the lighting so i can imagine i'm going to spend a bit of money on this project but it's something that that i'm that i'm really looking forward to and, and hopefully i can do it this year so i can release it next year well you got to get a team together and create a uh, funding campaign uh, yeah, you know, like uh, like our previous guest on the last episode, <laughs> um, to to be able to finance your film because yeah, that way you're not depending on you know someone someone else coming up with your especially for the type of film that you're talking about the story, um, yeah. you don't want them to have an input or any control over your creative choices. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm funding it by myself. Oh, good, good. Um, so yeah, but but I think raising funds would be a good idea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 really looking forward to it because um, it's again like with all the other projects that I've done, I kind of not spend a lot of money. I haven't even really spent money on the projects themselves. Maybe if I spend money like on on getting to the location. So the traveling costs and stuff like that. So there's no real, there's no real, no budget projects. Right. Uh, so, so, so the project, so a lot of my projects just like, like if I can do it for free or I can find a, a location for free, uh, you know, I'll do it. Um, so, so this project is more or less along the same lines because I'm trying to keep it as low budget as possible. Um, but yeah, no, sometimes it's, it's just a little bit impossible, especially with like, like when you start thinking of ideas and you know in your head it's it looks fantastic but then you realize oh but i need lights for that i need props for that <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's it's just like to bring bring it to, to to flourishing is is a bit of a challenge but like i said if i can if i can like do it with like minimal costs or like you know be in control of my project the better yes. um so yeah, that's 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 the goal at the end of the day. And you um, appreciate mobile filmmaking. Um, you, I, I think it was in 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 your email that you said something about that too. That most of the time, I mean, you have a a um, a, is it a mirrorless camera or something? 
Yes, so I uh, last year I bought my first uh, A7 III Sony camera, uh, mirrorless camera, it's a full frame camera, uh, and I also own a vlogging camera, Z a ZV1 uh, Sony as well. And even though I've I've done projects on both of these cameras, I mean a lot of my uh, YouTube videos are shoot on the the ZV1. Um, um, I keep on going back to mobile. Like most of my my main projects that I've done is with mobile. Um, and I just love the fact of how easy it is. I can literally pull the phone out, put it on flight mode, open up Filmic Pro, stick on my my lens, whichever one I prefer, which is always the anamorphic lens. Yeah. <laughs> um, and 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 start filming. Like like I think. Finding freedom and both assimilate, I did handheld. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did have like gimbals on standby and I did use it for like like one or two shots here and there. But I make, most of my shots were shot on handheld and I just love the simplicity and the minimalist uh, uh, setup with that, you know. Um, I just make sure that I'm exposed properly. I just make sure that my white balance is, is, is fine and, and I can tell the story. Uh, whereas with, my mirrors list is not as easy as like that. Um, even like setting up your white balance on a mirrorless camera, you need to put it in a particular setting um, and then do a custom um, white balance and then make sure that you expose properly. And, and even though, I mean, the sense is a lot bigger. So, I mean, like there's a lot of room, less room for mistakes yeah. with a mirrorless camera. Uh, I just find it a lot harder to film with my mirrorless camera opposed to my phone so i generally just go back to my phone and and use that because, yeah because you, you can know, stay I, creative I, and less technical yes and that's what i love about mobile mm-hmm. uh it's that you you can just create um like i love the technical aspects about st- of, of 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 like filmmaking but like just merely telling the story and making sure that you've you've captured the uh, the story and you've got that and 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 obviously the 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 stress of having to go and edit and put this thing right. together is a different cat kettle of fish but i mean like yeah like but just when you're via, filming, just that process though, yeah. of filming yeah because that's like you know like when the viewer is 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 watching your film you know you don't want them to be interrupted right with like commercials and ads and all this stuff right and in the same way when you're filming, right, you don't want to be interrupted by having to do this and having to do that. You'd rather just continue to yes, to get that out. Yes, and I think like the time spent is so much less. So, um, I mean, like time spent in terms of setup is a lot less. But, I mean, all of that other that time goes into to creating. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's that's what I love the most about about mobile uh, filmmaking is that it's just it just makes it a lot easier to 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 be creative yeah it's definitely the the attraction because a lot of more professional you know filmmakers uh and video producers are using smartphones and i think that's that's the attraction the fact that the the way that the cameras are now they allow them to do that um, you know, as opposed to, you know, five years ago, you know, where they, they weren't really taking it seriously. Uh, yeah. but now it's like, you know, I used to say it was my, my little elevator pitch. <laughs> Part of that was, and no, we're not leaving out the professionals because I know that you have a DSLR or whatever, but you also have a smartphone. So we're not leaving anybody out of this concept of mobile filmmaking. <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm so happy how it's been embraced. Um, because I mean like if you say that you made a feature film on a mobile phone, you know, generally people won't take you seriously. But now you find on the film uh uh film festival circuits worldwide, mm-hmm. like even on the, the like the more serious uh, film festivals, you find that people are entering their their mobile created content. Um because now people are taking it seriously. It's it's definitely an art form. Um, because I mean, at the end of the day, 
that story matters as much as someone that shot it on a red Komodo. Um, yes. Yeah, like like I'm just like uh, like I'm just happy that it's in, in that space where people can take me seriously as a filmmaker, opposed to say, "Oh, you just made TikTok video on your phone." No, but um, that's yeah. a that's just a thing. Um, you know, uh, you were just talking about feature films, and um, in two. 2016, I proposed the idea during our film festival. All right, we're going to start accepting feature films now. It's time. It's time for you guys to do it. Sean Baker made Tangerine in 2015. Come on, let's let's do this. We're we're gonna put the challenge out there. And it took took a couple years for people to to for me to start seeing feature films. You know, from filmmakers coming into our film festival. Now, mind you, though, because I know you like documentaries, <laughs> but um, yeah. we we are sticking with narrative films in our film festival for feature films. Yeah. And, uh, and then we only select three to screen at the film festival. And uh, the winner of last year's film festival, actually, I just, I got to bring her up. Uh, Because you were just talking about that. But she shot and edited on her iPhone 8 her entire feature-length film. It was called Sharon. And her name is Jennifer Zhang. And um, that is the first time that uh, I was talking to Filmic Pro in, in one of our podcasts with Film Convert, our sponsor. And I brought that up. You know, and if Filmic Pro and no one else out there has heard of someone that actually shot and edited an entire feature film on their on their phone before, and she did it, she's a pioneer. Yeah. So, so like what you're saying, it's like there's no excuse, right? Yeah, not at all. Well, not at you all. You are With definitely. Luma Fusion, Filmic. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I mean, with Luma Fusion and Filmic, everything, you have the tools that are there. I mean, okay, the, the software does cost a little bit of money, but at least it's, it's an investment that you're making within your own filmmaking aspirations. It's still so, cheaper than having to buy a laptop or, or, or an iPad. Exactly. Just and the thing is, edit. you have the phone. You yeah. have the phone. It's there. It's still very we hard, use though. The phone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think yeah, about I it. Yeah, I can you imagine know, on the trying to screen. edit on a phone. Yes, she and sat and there and pinch, did the whole thing. And you pinch yes. and drag. And it's not like, I'm so used to editing on, on, a, on a computer. Yes. Like, I did try and, like, a lot of my short stuff, I, I do uh, film and edit on my phone uh, using a free software called Splice. Um, so oh, what I, I love about Splice. Splice. Yes, I it love. Was one I of the love first, Splice. Yes, like a lot of people talk about VN. Yes, as I an editor, and I and I tried it, but I love Splice because they have like all the tools. They have the music. They have the titles. They have the the the. You can literally color grade it on your phone. And, They've been around forever. And and it's free. Yep. And you get all of this ad free. Yes. Um, so it's, it's, it's just one of the, the, the little tools that I also use. So if I don't want to like seriously edit something in Premiere or in Final Cut Pro, I use Splice and works amazingly for me. Yeah. There's a, you know, there's, it, it's, you know, why don't you, you know, as we're wrapping up on, on, on this episode, why don't you share with our listeners just like some three key points for them to keep in mind um, to get them going, to have, have things set up. Like whatever you do, make sure you have this, this, and this, and then start rolling. Start making your movie. I know I just put you on oh, the that, spot. but Okay, so you want <laughs> me to give you tips? Yeah, like just three key things that would they need to do in order to that would really facilitate them you know because everybody always says you know to inspire them right just do it just do it and and i think our listeners are getting tired of just hearing just do it so i want you to give them three key tips right that will inspire them to feel the confidence kind of like the confidence that you felt when you were (laughs) 
<laughs> when you decided to charge the guy for making that that music video, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. to give them that kind of confidence and inspire them, but with just three things that you can say, if you have this, you do this and you do this, you're ready to go. Wow. The first thing I would say is make sure that your lens is clean. So keep your gear clean. Like you wouldn't understand, like you just said now that just go out and shoot. People don't pay attention with making sure that they don't have finger marks on their, their, <laughs> their lens. And there's nothing worse than going back to the editing room and you find that your gear wasn't clean. When you see so it on like the big me, screen, right? <laughs> yes, like that's that's probably like the, the 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 number one thing that I'm always like aware of to make sure wipe off the lens. Very good. Make sure that your lenses are clean, your gear is clean. That's the one thing that I would say. The second one I would say is know your gear. So one thing about filmmakers or mobile filmmakers that I see a lot is that they would show off they've got this gimbal with that thing and that piece of gear and that piece of gear, and they've got this like very impressive rig. But then I'm like, can you show me what you filmed with that rig? Because the thing is, there, it will always be a never-ending situation where you're going to acquire gear all the time. I need this for filmmaking. I need that for filmmaking. Literally, the start is with your phone. Know your gear. Decide what you want to do. Like, for instance, I love filming in 21 by 9. I love filming um, uh, with my an anamorphic lens. So I've got my go-to lenses and my go-to gear that I, that I use. And that's what I use because if I have to accumulate gear after gear after gear after gear, I'll, nev I'll never get to my projects because I'm like, oh, I need this. I need that. I need this. So the basic stuff that I have is I have my lenses. I have my nd filters i have some diffusion filters as well and i've got my phone and i've got my my u-rig that i use to 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 set up everything so know your gear be satisfied with what you have because the thing is you'll never end you'll, you'll never have enough if you keep on like just accumulating stuff and all of that and the third advice that i would give is that work within the limitations of of a smartphone don't think that you are going to whip out your smartphone and it's going to replace whatever other gear you might have like like if you if you are lucky enough to own a cinema a camera um, a mobile phone is not the same as a cinema camera but the a mobile phone has a lot more advantages to what a cinema camera has in in the fact that you can get into tight spaces so um just Work with the limitations that, that, that a phone offers. Uh, know what the limitations are. You can get depth of field. It's just it means you're going to have to stick this thing in front of people's faces <laughs> uh, to, to get the, the same level of depth of field. But um, just work with the limitations and, 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 and create um, like with, with, within those limitations. Uh, I think that's, that's what I can say about like giving tips. Wow. That was some <laughs> awesome advice though. Very thorough too. And I, I and I I hope our listeners are now like, you know, maybe not if you're driving, don't don't start writing notes, but <laughs> um but definitely these are very these are very good tips. And I think with just knowing those three things, now you can get out there and do it. You know? Yeah. And and it doesn't mean like that you're going to do it and you're going to be happy with the result. You're probably going to make mistakes. And, you know, yes. I could tell you that the biggest directors in the world, the most famous and the ones that you idolize and everything, they have many moments when they're not happy with the results <laughs> themselves. Yes. And it's not because yeah. they haven't hired or they don't know what they're doing. It's just that people who create are hard to, um, for the most part, right, as an artist, you're never really satisfied with your own work. You, you're wearing I different eyes. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah. So 
All right, guys. Uh, any last words? <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to say thank you to you for 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 bringing me on your your podcast. Um, I'm so glad and happy that that I got an opportunity to to speak to someone from San Diego. I've never <laughs> ever, ever in my whole entire life had a chance to speak to to someone from from that side of the world, and that's just the 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 testament to the power of filmmaking and mobile filmmaking is that there is this worldwide community of people that that are just interested in 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 creating meaningful content um and we're all doing it on our mobile phones so i just wanted to say thank you for for bringing me on here and uh, if any of your listeners are, are listening and and they find themselves in south africa you they can hit me up they can go to my social media uh drop me a link perhaps we can do some projects i'm always up for for something um so so if anyone comes to South Africa, you're more than welcome to hit me up. You have a friend in, in, in Africa. <laughs> We're going to share with our listeners all your, you know, your social media and the links to your, to your films, uh, your YouTube, your Twitter, your Facebook, your Instagram. Not everybody is on everywhere, but everybody is somewhere. I feel yeah. like I just gave the world's best quote. <laughs> You must write that down. <laughs> I'll forget. I've, I'll forget in a minute, um, because uh, they, you, we do want you to connect with Brion, and he's, uh, his videos are very informative. Um, I know you're gonna love them, so please watch them, connect with him, and who knows, you may be working on that project with him that he was just discussing. Right. Yeah, I would I would love to connect with as many people as possible. Um so yeah, just hit me up on 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 the socials whichever one you prefer and yeah, thank you so much for for the opportunity for for being on your podcast. I feel that I must also tell you it's been an honor to speak with you. I am glad that you came on the show. I know it's early in the morning for you, but I want to tell you that you add value to my podcast by being on the show. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, uh, thank you so much for, for being so kind. All right. So say goodbye to our listeners. Cheers, everybody. Have a good day. Enjoy yourself. And we'll see Bye. you on the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>